What's up guys? Um, today is day four and let me tell you something. Um, I did this devotion and I read through the content, I read the verses and I had to stop at a verse in Hosea because it grabbed my attention. And today's topic, today's like overview is basically reminding ourselves that our bodies are a temple, that God created our bodies and truly it is a responsibility that we have. I'm going to say it again over and over in the study, but today's focus of the day is to ensure that just like 1 Corinthians talks about, that we are treating our body as an act of service that um, I think that goes far beyond just physically taking care of ourselves, but making sure that when we look in the mirror, we understand that we are created by God and that we are wonderfully and remarkably made by Him. I think that through eating right and through exercise, it can be a form of worship because you're surrendering that lifestyle to God and you're asking Him for help and for the willpower to endure even when we don't feel like it. Because let me tell you something, just like we learned earlier this week, temptation is everywhere. And it's really acceptable to sit on the couch and be lazy. I mean, it's okay. I, my life slogan is to love fast and live slow. So by no means am I telling you that relaxation is bad. I love to relax. I love to rest. As a matter of fact, if I don't get eight to 10 hours of sleep a night, then I don't feel good. So that's, I mean, that's pretty extreme, right? So I celebrate rest. I celebrate relaxation. But I also celebrate those and I celebrate the efforts when you actually take a step forward and take care of your body physically, burning those muscles, eating sensibly, right from wrong, you know, right? So it's common sense and it takes discipline. But what the video is about today, specifically a verse in Hosea that captivated me and I had to dig deeper. I explained a little bit in this email why, what I mean by digging a little bit deeper because by no means am I assuming that we all know what that means or what that looks like because I am, I mean, I'm right here with you trying to understand the Bible. I'm right here with you trying to dig in and be a student of the word. I don't know everything. I probably don't have all the right answers. I am simply a believer who loves Jesus, believes that his word was inspired and written by him. And I'm just trying to learn about him so I could be more like him. So I hope that you would accept me in all of my imperfections as I go through Hosea and how I interpreted that verse. So I'm going to share with you here. It says, sow for yourselves righteousness, reap the fruit of unfailing love, and break up the unplowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness over you. Okay? So another way of saying that is break up the untilled ground. And I thought, hold up, hold up. I ain't no farmer. I don't know what, I don't know what tilled, untilled, unplowed means. So I dug a bit into that. And I did so by looking through some biblical commentaries, some online free re resources, and you have access to them too. It's called a commentary, which is really just like a way that you could study a bit deeper into a verse and what the original author meant by it and the certain terms and context and time that it was written. And so let me explain further what it means to not have your field plowed, to have untilled ground. We obviously know like on a farmer sense what that would look like. That's like a farmer expecting to go out and plant seeds on a field that's full of thorns, weeds, rocks, stumps, and it's not ready. It's not ready for harvest. Are you going to be able to, like it's a farmer going to be dumb and lazy enough to try to throw seed out, have his oxen, have his workers go out there, plow the ground, I mean not plow the ground, go out there, plant seeds on a ground that's not prepared for the harvest. No, what a farmer is going to do is he's going to plow the ground. He's going to take care of it. He's going to remove the stumps in the ground. He's going to remove the weeds and the thorns. He's going to remove the large rocks so that when it's time to plant the seeds, when it's time to water the seeds, when it's time for those seeds to grow and to prosper and for a whole entire field of crop to be blossomed, it will be ready and primed. Now take that in a spiritual sense. This, is, this blew my mind here because I thought, oh man, what the author here was saying is you don't need to let your heart be unplowed. What? What does that mean? All right, let's break it down a little bit further. And as we're talking about health and fitness, this is really how we can apply it to our life. All right, so as we're discussing the idea of a farm, the idea of unplowed ground, I think about our lives and what areas we might have untilled. Are our hearts hardened? Are we stubborn in some areas? Are the corners of our life still 
um, being covered with excuses of, well, I'm a victim and it's not fair and I'm not living healthier because of somebody else. It's easy to cast blame. It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to say, well, only if it was easier or I have so much to go. I have to lose 100 pounds and it's easy for her and I have this injury and I'm not that flexible and I can't move like that and I don't know what to eat. All of those things are weeds and thorns that are holding you back from making sure that your harvest, that your heart is ready for God to do big things. God wants to um, do amazing things through your life. God wants you to use the gifts and strengths and passions that he's given you to the maximum. But if we continue to allow our hearts, our field, to be full of rocks, stumps, thorns and weeds without preparing it, without removing the sin, without removing the stubbornness, without removing the excuses. I don't really feel like God's going to have a good field to go in there and just prosper. God's not going to come into your life and say, look, you're not doing anything. You're not surrendering to me. You're holding on to all this. You're being selfish and stubborn and resentful and still have bitterness and anger in your heart. You're not letting me prune those things out of your life. It's going to be really hard for God to work in you and through you if you have such a hard heart. Does that make sense? So what areas in your life are untilled? And if you really want God to like blow up in your life, if you really want your relationship with him to, I mean, go deeper and be more intimate than ever before, then it's time for us to surrender. And it's time for us to make sure that our hearts are ready for God to work in and that we are not just a dumb and lazy farmer trying to plant this crop on a land full of rocks and hardness and stubble and stubbornness and sin. God wants to prune those out. So today, as I was praying through what I need to surrender and what areas of my heart are stubborn and fighting and prideful, all of these things, I think, okay, God, what areas do I need to let go of? What do I need to um, break up the ground? Where do I need to break up the ground so you then have a ripe and ready field to come into my life and through me, use me in a mighty way. I hope that's your prayer today. And I hope that through bits and pieces of that, it made sense. So my question and call to action today, in the midst of all the other things we're learning in day four, I know that it's a lot of greatness. I know that there are a lot of good nuggets in here and I hope that you are underlining and growing just like I am. But think about the verse in Hosea. Think about are there areas in your life, are there fears that you have, are there excuses that you're hiding behind that's preventing you from taking the next step in your life, in your faith, in your obedience to Him? Okay? Can't wait to hear from you guys.